بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to a sister's Ramadan This is your sister Naima B. Robert here and I am so so pleased that you made the decision to join us today I've said it clearly, I've said it before and I'll say it again I am on a mission to remind every single one of you to cherish and nurture your loved ones while you still can Let's not fall into the trap of taking them for granted and assuming that we have tomorrow and next week and next year. Let's use this Ramadan to nurture our relationships, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with ourselves and with our loved ones and those around us. Are you ready? In today's episode, we will be looking at how to nurture your relationship with your spouse. For those of you who are married, let's take a trip down memory lane. Do you remember what it was like looking forward to being married, wishing to be married, the excitement of meetings and sit downs and questions and answers and families getting involved? Do you remember the excitement of the wedding? Do you remember those early days when you were still learning each other, when you were so curious about each other, young love, old love, whatever it was? Do you remember setting up a home together? starting out on this big adventure, looking at every day as a gift, being so grateful for your spouse, being so in love. SubhanAllah. For those of you who've been married for a few years now, you may be struggling to actually remember those days, but I want you to cast your mind back. Because for many of us, when we met our spouse, we had been praying on it. We had been making dua. We had prayed istikhara, we had spoken to family, spoken to friends, done our research, we'd read books, we'd watched talks, we'd watched videos. We had really prepared ourselves as best we could to be the best spouse possible. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors for us to get married, we were over the moon, overjoyed, grateful, and so ready to make the most of this relationship. Why is it that Sometimes after only a few years, the novelty wears off. We, we don't feel that sense of gratitude anymore. We don't feel that sense of excitement. We don't feel that connection. We don't feel that love. And maybe we're still looking for it, but life has moved on. It's real life now. Responsibilities, rights, you know, uh, respect and you know, disagreements and all that. The normal things that come with a relationship. So while... Nobody expects the honeymoon period to last a lifetime. We do know that we can fall into taking our spouse for granted. And that's really what I'd like to talk about today. Because what I'd like to look at is how we, as Muslim women, could potentially use this month to reconnect with our spouse, to recommit to being the best wife that we can be. Let's reflect a little on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about marriage. We are taught in our deen that marriage, the relationship between a husband and a wife, is actually one of Allah's signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves, that ye may dwell, dwell in tranquility with them, and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily in that are signs for those who reflect. SubhanAllah. This love between a man and a woman who come together to form a family is one of Allah's signs. And the fact that he has brought you and your spouse together and put that love and mercy is yet again another reason for us to return to him in gratitude, to return to him in acceptance of what he has chosen for us. We are also taught that husband and wife are garments for each other. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your wives are a garment for you and you are a garment for them. And this verse reminds us of the qualities of a garment because as garments 
we strive to adapt and change and accommodate our spouse as they grow. Think about your clothing. What does it do? It protects, it covers, it beautifies. And if we are to be garments for our spouses, then we have to be able to have the flexibility to accommodate them when they grow, to come in a little when they need extra support. As a garment, there are times when we need to lighten as summer draws near or to grow heavier when winter is coming in. In this way, we find synergy with our spouse to be their positive when they hit a negative, to be their left brain when they're stuck in right brain mode, to be their pillow when they need to lean, to be their pillow when they need to lay. Now, being a garment, as you probably know if you've been married for any length of time, does not happen by miracle or mistake. It's a conscious choice, a conscious choice to live by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidelines, to strive for ful to fulfill the promise of his words. Another thing that we sometimes forget when it comes to our spouses is that our spouse is in a manner. This person has been entrusted to us. We have been charged with their care, with their love, with their support, with their nurturing, with their respect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only has given us a husband, but he has also given us a set of responsibilities that go along with having that husband. And we will be asked about them. This is a trust. And just as any amana has been lent to us, it can also be taken away, as I shared in earlier episodes. So if this is the case, if our marriages and the love between a husband and a wife are a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If indeed we are to be garments, if indeed our spouses are a manner that we will be questioned about, why don't we use Ramadan to get better at what we're doing? Why don't we use Ramadan to nurture that relationship? Well, when it comes to nurturing your relationship with your spouse, specifically during Ramadan, ah, let's seek to refine our character this Ramadan. We already know that during Ramadan, our focus is on becoming the best version of ourselves. So which version of ourselves can we bring to our marriage that will, inshallah, increase the love and mercy between us and our spouses? Well, I'm going to share with you, inshallah, five strategies that you can employ bi'ithnillah this month to start developing a better relationship with your spouse. And the first of those is gratitude. Gratitude to your husband for who he is, for what he brings, for what he does, no matter how big or how small. Sis, let me tell you, it's a game changer. Not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that if we are grateful, he will increase us in good, but every human being loves to be acknowledged for their effort, for their striving, for what they bring to the family, to the home, to the relationship, to the marriage. So this Ramadan, my challenge to you, sis, is to set yourself in gratitude mode when it comes to your husband. Say thank you. Say Jazakallah khairan. Tell him, I appreciate what you're doing. I see the effort that you're making. I'm grateful for you. And let me know how it works for you, inshallah. I know for some people that might feel uncomfortable, but trust me, that gratitude that you express will come back to you in more ways than you can imagine. The second strategy that I'm inviting you to employ, if you're up for it, is humility. Many, many, many of us as human beings have a tendency to be arrogant and proud. We think that we're right. We think we know what's best. We think that we should be in charge of every single situation. But I would invite you to embrace humility this Ramadan. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as human beings so much in need of his mercy, so much in need of him and in need of the people. It's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to be humble. It's okay to accept. It's okay to not argue. It's okay to let it go. The third strategy that I will invite you to employ is kindness. 
Kindness is such a simple concept, but you'd be surprised how many of us are unkind to our husbands. Now, if you're not one of those sisters who is unkind to your husband, then please chew the meat and spit out the bones. But I would love to encourage every one of my viewers to embrace even more kindness to your husband this, this, in this season and afterwards. Be kind to him. Be gentle with him. Make excuses for him. Be easy with him. We've been advised so many times to be easy with the people. Be easy with your husband. And then the fourth strategy is generosity. Give, give, give. From your heart for the sake of Allah. Be happy to serve, be happy to provide, be happy to give, be happy to be at someone else's service. SubhanAllah, there are many, many people out there who do not have a spouse with whom they can be generous, with whom they can be kind, with whom they can be grateful. So let's remember that. And let's remember as well that everything that we give ultimately is from Allah. So we will never lose by giving, especially if we remember our asal and remember our original, which is that we give for the sake of Allah. And then the fifth strategy is respect and obedience. Respect him and listen to him. Don't argue with him. Make this a month of being agreeable. Make this a month of being easy. Make this a month of honoring your husband. And hopefully it won't be only a month. Maybe it will become something that you see the fruits of and you see it working so well that you embrace it. But the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about obedience to the husband and he has spoken about it in how it should play out with regards to our marriages. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about respect and obeying the husband many times as well. So those are my five strategies for how you can purify your own character in Ramadan, but in a way that inshallah will draw you closer to your husband and improve your relationship with him and improve your marriage. Now, sis, it's over to you. Now it's time to sit down and think about how you can nurture your relationship with your spouse this Ramadan. And remember our four-step process, renewing your intention for everything that you are doing for him and for the relationship. What is your intention? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second step, slowing down, trying to cut down on the multitasking, being mindful and taking each task as it comes. The third step, taking yourself to account. At the end of the day, ask yourself, how did I do? And the fourth step, press the reset button. Not every day will be perfect and not every day will be as you wished it to be. And that's okay. You deserve another chance tomorrow. You deserve to give yourself a thousand second chances. So simply press reset and make a decision to do differently the next day. I certainly hope that you got something out of this episode of A Sister's Ramadan. I would love to hear how these few strategies that I've given you, how they play out, how the results are, do let us know on social media by tagging Iman Channel and Naima B. Robert in all your posts and make sure that you use hashtag Sisters Ramadan. We would love to see whether these strategies are working for you and love to hear your thoughts on them as well. I'm going to be so excited to share the next episode with you because we're going to be talking about your relationship with your children. So don't forget to meet me then. Subhanak Allahumma Rabbana wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.